Uh, let's get started with part one on um, the elements of music here. It'd probably be beneficial if you read through your textbook on pages 1 through 57 before viewing this video. However, uh, I know some of you are still uh, trying to get a hold of the textbook, so it's not necessary, but uh, do read through all the chapter because you are going to be through the whole part and chapters 1 through 10 because you will be responsible for all the materials here, right? So let's talk about elements. What is music? You know, that's, uh, you know, in order for us to appreciate music, we have to uh, probably define what music is. And probably the most textbook definition that you're going to find is that uh, music is an art based on organization of sounds in time here, right? Um, organization of sounds in time. And I think the key word in this is the word sound. M music deals with the art of sound. When we think of art, we usually think of visual art, such as paintings, sculptures, and uh, musical artists uh, manipulate and organize sound. And in order to understand this art, we need to at least know how sound is created. Well, all sound starts with the vibration of an object. So for example, when I just played a key on my piano here, I started um, that sound by vibrating the strings within the piano. And we'll talk about each of those um, um, you know, different types of instruments later on there. So in a nutshell, what happens is these vibrations travel through the air or some type of medium and they hit our eardrums. And then those ear, the vibrations of the eardrums send signals to our brains and that interprets the sound that is created there. And uh, how our brain interprets those sounds and organizes them in such a way if they're not organized already uh, I think defines how music is created. Of course music is a vital part of I think of almost every aspect of human society. I think it provides entertainment. That's probably the first thing that we think of as far as music is concerned. Uh, that it is as consumers we use music as a sort of entertainment but that's not the only purpose. Um, a lot of us use uh, the ability to, to create music as an emotional release or a way to express ourselves in a way that maybe other forms of communication are not uh, possible. And one of the things I think as far as the special time that we're living in right now is that you know recorded music, uh, stuff that we could just play back um, without uh, actually um, uh, having other musicians or ourselves create it is really an in innovation of the 20th century, not too long here. So we're in a really special time where music is on demand and we can listen to it almost um, anywhere, anywhere and anytime that we uh, so desire here, especially with technology these days. One of the goals that I'm hoping to achieve from this um, uh, from this course is to have students to acquire a more precise way of describing your musical experience. A lot of times we think, yeah, you know, I like that song, you know, I love, you know, a lot of you already started with your discussion forms saying, oh, I love, uh, you know, uh, uh, R&B or I love country music here, um, but then you don't know exactly why. And that's what we're hoping to do in this class is to go beyond comments of like, well, that has a nice melody or it has a good beat. You could probably um, uh, compare it to a meteorologist who would say, you know, today is going to be a nice day. You know, that, that could be so subjective and, um, uh, you know, can be interpreted by uh, so many different people in different ways there that they probably would get fired if they just left their forecast to being just a nice day or a horrible weekend there. All right? they, we want to know, is it going to be raining or is it going to be, uh, uh, what's the temperature going to be like here? And that's the way we want to describe music as well in order to know why um, uh, it has, uh, it's a nice piece of music or, or something that is appealing to us. So, of course, same thing goes with music critics and um, if you limited your reviews to just what you like and didn't like without elaborating on it, then you're not really doing a service to um, uh, people who potentially could be listening to that music. And I think in order to best understand music, I, uh, it's best to realize that there are basically four elements, just four elements of musical sound that we'll be discussing, particularly in this unit. One is the pitch. Uh, that regards the highness or lowness of the sound. Uh, number two is the dynamics. Uh, that re uh, refers to the volume or the degrees of loudness and softness of sound. 
tone color, which is the quality of the sound, whether it's bright sound or a dark sound. We also call that timbre as well, not timber, but timbre. And also the duration, how long the sound lasts and the recurrence of beats, if there are any. And it's usually these four elements that shape the way that we interpret um, uh, different sounds into what we call music. So if we start here in chapter one, we're gonna talk about, uh, let's talk about a few of these elements here, namely pitch dynamics and tone color. You know, our world is filled with all different types of sounds here, and the sounds can be pleasant to the ear or they can also be unpleasant to the ear. Um, I guess when they're unpleasant, a lot of times we interpret them as noise as opposed to music there. But as humans, uh, what makes us kind of special is that we're able to focus, our brain allows us to focus in on specific sounds uh, that are going on around us and actually can even kind of shut out or ignore the sounds that are not of particular interest to us there. And this it's this kind of uh, relationship with our brain and sound that is being created all around us that uh, is uh, what uh, creates the um, art of music. Now let's talk about the first um, element uh, which is pitch. Now the definition of what pitch is is the highness or the lowness of sound. Why Mickey Mouse talks like this, and you know, uh, <laughs> Darth Vader talks like that. There, those are uh, probably the most obvious uh, um, uh, examples of how pitch uh, is uh, differentiated here. What determines um, uh, the pitch of a particular sound is the frequency of the um, vibrations or the rate of speed. You know, what a free, when we're talking about frequency of uh, sound, we're talking about the rate of the speed of the vibrations of a sound producing object here. Here on my piano here, I have white keys, I have black keys. All the keys on my right have a very high pitch. And then on the, on the left of my piano on the bottom, they have lower pitch. The reason for that on the piano is because the ones that are at the higher end of the spectrum actually have hammers that strike uh, shorter strings there. Shorter strings usually produce higher frequencies and they actually uh, vibrate at a, uh, uh, at a faster uh, rate of speed there. Um, whereas uh, the larger or lower strings there, uh, those uh, tend to vibrate at a slower uh, frequency. All right. So um, in, in essence, um, or I should say in general, smaller skinnier instruments such as the flute or oboe uh, tend to have higher frequencies, whereas larger and fatter instruments such as the tuba or um, double bass tend to have a lower pitch. Another term that you should be familiar with as it relates to pitch is the word interval. An interval is defined as the difference in pitch between two tones. Like for example, if I play these two pitches at the piano, there's a certain interval between them here. We call this a fifth because they are one, two, three, four, five notes apart from each other here on the piano keyboard here, all right? Um, and another interval that uh, is used is called the uh, octave. An octave is when you take two white keys here, such as this C and then this C, we call that an octave there because they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes apart from each other here. And actually the frequency of the tones is actually um, uh, double or half of the frequency depending on which one that you're talking about here. Tones that are an octave apart seem to just naturally blend together. If you took an oscilloscope there and put these two tones together, you would see that they would actually match up pretty well with one another here, all right? And that's why they are tend to be uh, pretty pleasing to the ear. Now, Western music usually divides the octave into all these 12 different tones, both white keys and black keys as far as it relates to the piano. And those are the tones that are usually the basis of Western cultured music. Non-Western music might divide it into a different number, but most Western based music is based off of a scale of eight tones like that C major scale. And various instruments and voices actually have a distance between uh, their highest possible pitch and the lowest possible pitch. On the uh, piano, there's a range of 88 different keys here, all right? But not everyone can sing ev you know, every single uh, note on the piano here, and we'll be discussing a range of uh, various instruments uh, in the uh, uh, next uh, chapter.